Hi, Brian McMahon. It's Bob Duff. How are you? Uh, thanks so much for uh, asking me to answer some of these questions for me. I really appreciate it. Uh, before I get started, just want to thank your teachers, uh, especially Ms. McAndrew, um, and thank all of you for your hard work during distance learning. Uh, everyone has really been doing a great job from your principal all the way down to everyone at the school. So uh, I applaud all of that you're doing. I know it's not easy, and um, but I appreciate uh, your hard work and hanging in there. Um, so uh, I have an opportunity now to answer some of your questions. We're going to do links for each one. Um, so the first topic is general questions about being a state senator. And uh, number one is what made you want to be a state representative? Well, uh, I always knew when I was little that uh, I had some sort of a passion for public service. I wasn't sure exactly what that was going to be, if, if that was going to be elected or not. Uh, but when I was little, I wrote letters to the mayor, actually, about Leonard's speech and uh, issues on, at Veterans Park. And but the thing was, the mayor actually responded back, and it was very inspirational. I still have those letters hanging in my office right here at home. Um, so uh, you never know what kind of inspires you. And then when uh, Alex Knopp, who was a state representative, was elected mayor back in 2001, he said to me, now we got to get you elected. I was like, what? And so I took that opportunity and, and ran for state rep, and here I am. So I was in the House for three years. I came in in a special election uh, for one year and then had a full term after that. So that's that's what happened. Number two is what was the first step you took to, in the right path that led you to become a senator? Well, this, the state senate position is actually interesting because it was gerrymandered, <clears throat> meaning it was, it was drawn to be a Republican uh, dominated seat, and I'm a Democrat, and so it was always kind of like, well, uh, Democrats can never win that seat. But what ended up happening is I think this is a good life lesson for everybody, is that if you do your job, you put your head down, and you, you work hard at things, opportunities come along. If you're sometimes just looking at what the next step is or the, or uh, and not focusing on what your current job is, those opportunities don't come along, and people kind of see right through that. So uh, I never really dreamt I would be uh, in the state Senate. Frankly, I never dreamed I'd be in the state house. Um, but uh, when that opportunity came along, the current state senator decided not to run. And I uh, stepped up for that. I knew it was a risk, uh, but it was a risk I wanted to take and uh, that it was going to be um, a good opportunity for me to serve more constituents and uh, to hopefully have a better voice up in Hartford. Uh, three, what is the hardest part of my job? The hardest part of my job, actually, is the fact that um, I can't always fix every single thing. Uh, we get elected as public servants to uh, help people, to make things better, to hopefully, uh, you know, make make lives uh, better for folks when they have problems. And and sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Uh, biggest example is right now during this pandemic that we have. We want to be able to wave a magic wand and fix everybody's problems when with the unemployment office or help people right now who are desperately hurting because they've lost their jobs uh, and they don't have income or help because they may not have enough food. So uh, lots of things we want to try and do. Um, you can have a really great, um, you really can have a, a great impact in your communities um, by being elected and you fix a lot of things, but sometimes the hardest part is that you can't fix everything. And uh, that, that can be frustrating at times, but you always work your hardest and you, you keep trying. Uh, number four, <clears throat> what exactly will you do to help small communities? Uh, that's a great question. Um, Norwalk is a city. We're the sixth largest city in Connecticut, so we're, we're not small at all. However, uh, I do represent Darien, which is smaller, and they have different needs than Norwalk does. But I also would say for small communities, it's also my job to represent uh, every community within my district. So um, represent smaller communities uh, for example, like uh, Latinos and Hispanics represent uh, communities uh, like you know, African Americans and um, women and others uh, who don't look like me. So I view that as also representing communities of people who um, may have different experiences than I do, but I, I have to make sure I listen to those and represent them uh, to the best extent that I possibly can and bring those experiences with me up to Hartford. So also on top of that, it's also important <clears throat> to represent everybody. Elections are about uh, uh, getting 50% of the vote plus one, but once the elections are over, you are representing 100% of your community. So you have to represent people who even didn't vote for you. And that's representing the entire community um, that's out there. Uh, number five is, what do you like 
about representing Nauk. Well, what I love about representing Nauk is that I was born and raised here. I'm fifth generation. My kids are here, so they're sixth generation. Um, so I feel very uh, comfortable here, and I, I feel like a good advocate for the city because I know it so well. And I've known you know people for a very long time, and they know me. And I just want Norwalk to thrive and do well and uh, be positioned in the future for success. So um, so what I love about representing Norwalk is the fact that I uh, went to the public schools here. I even substitute taught a long time ago in the public schools, and I'm a local realtor here. So I feel very, very invested in the community, which is really important to me. Okay, thanks so much. That was the first, first topic. Thank you.